story of Wilkin and Sons, makers of fine jam and preserves, begins in the year 1711, when arable farmland outside the small village of Tiptree was purchased by the Wilkin family. The farm solely cultivated arable crops for over 150 years, until 1865 when a parcel of land was put over to fruit farming. And after the commendation of fruit preserves by the British Prime Minister William Gladstone, the farm then increased its fruit production and formed the Britannia Fruit Preserving Company in 1885, the base on which Wilkin and Sons was built. In May the following year, the company purchased additional land with which to expand its burgeoning preserves business. Indeed, only 10 years later, the farm was producing more than 200 tonnes of fruit a year, with half of that being made into jams and preserves, largely for the Australian market. By 1891, the farm employed 400 people just to pick the fruit, and when taken into consideration with those employed in the jam factory and associated needs of the business, such as transport and administration, the Britannia Fruit Preserving Company positively affected the village of Tiptree and caused increased population growth by means of readily available employment. The fruit pickers earned between 5 and 16 shillings eightpence a week, with the factory workers earning considerably more at up to one pound a week, putting their pay in line with other contemporary skilled workers. The growth of the Britannia Fruit Preserving Company, now known as Wilkin & Sons, was not without its difficulties. At one point, the owner, Mr Arthur Charles Wilkin, was forced to sell a horse to partly cover the wages bill. But despite some minor hiccups, the business increased its farm holdings both in the local area and across the counties of Essex and Suffolk. Mr Wilkin, like many businessmen of his time, took a philanthropic approach to his employees and the village of Tiptree. In 1900, he was active in establishing an old age relief fund for the poor of the village and introduced a pension scheme for his employees, later going so far as to build retirement houses for his workforce. In Tiptree Village, Mr Wilkin gave land to the church, helped fund the building of the Salvation Army Hall, and gave employment to the Salvation Army cadets. By 1906, Wilkin and Sons had amassed 800 acres of land and was producing 300 tonnes of fruit per year. Production increased in line with the fruit harvests, and by 1914 it was reported by the Essex Telegraph newspaper that during Monday, over 10 tonnes of strawberries, including a large portion of the famous Little Scarlet, were made into jam. Mr Wilkins' jam and preserves business was never looking better. However, the outbreak of war in Europe in the summer of 1914 had a detrimental effect on the business. Wilkin & Sons records from November 1914 state that business at standstill, large works closed, much unemployment. Production problems continued throughout the war, and by 1918 the records state that there was an acute shortage of wheat, sugar and other important foods. Went to see government jam controller in London. Turned out to be a barrister. Very difficult to convince that one pound of sugar and one pound of fruit would not make two pounds of jam. Fortunately for Wilkin and Sons, they were able to recover after the war, and by 1922 the business had increased again, with its holdings now including over a hundred houses, eight farms, one windmill, one blacksmith's forge, a factory club, and over a thousand acres of land. The company continued to trade independently until 1939, when the business was taken under the control of the Ministry of Food, in line with the government's policy of securing food production during the 1939-1945 war. With imported foodstuffs such as sugar, half of the raw materials needed to make jam and preserves being rationed, the quality of Wilkin & Sons produce looked threatened. However, Mr Wilkin was able to obtain special dispensation and was allowed to continue making his jams and preserves to their original recipes. Since 1945, Wilkin and Sons has seen a long and steady period of growth, at odds with the general decline in British manufacturing. A renewed focus on homegrown fruits has helped the farm to flourish and today it grows more fruit than ever and is perhaps the world's premier producer of jams and preserves.